Is over there. Nope. Oh, hang on a second. Oh, I found it. Oh, my pencil. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually make a Kiridashi marking knife using this circular saw blade. So there's going to be grinding, cutting, sharpening, and a little bit of woodwork too. Oh, exciting, eh? Okay. So let's get to it and make our Kiridashi marking knife. Oh, ain't you excited? Oh, you should be. Well, that's enough of him. But I'm quite excited about this project. We're making a Kiridashi Japanese-style marking knife from a circular saw blade. So first of all, we've got to mark out the Kiridashi marking knife. With a marker pen that we do, okay. Oh, and then we'll cut it out with an angle grinder, a four and a half inch, 125 millimeter diameter angle grinder with a cutting disc in. So we swap the disc over for another metal cutting, cutting disc. And we place it in the vise to cut out the marking knife, the Kiridashi marking knife that we do. Now I did realise while I was doing this that maybe I should have marked that Kiridashi marking knife the other way round to make use of the hardened edge of the steel blade. At first I thought I was being clever making use of the round for the handle. But in hindsight I should have flipped it round. So the cutting edge was on the hardened steel. But say the thing. It's perfectly fine anyway for a marking knife. It works a treat, that it does. So we've managed to cut out our blade of the marking knife. And we've got to remove all the internal waste of steel. Because we don't want that bit, no. We want about to have somewhere to put our fingers. Yeah, so we can hold it. It needs a handle. Although it is a one-piece marking knife. The blade and the handle portion are all cut from the same piece of steel. But we will be making a handle that sandwiches the marking line. So we grind away loads of sparks and cooling off as we go with a little bit of water so it doesn't get too hot. We don't want to turn them blue because you could lose its temper. And it just won't do. So I've got rid of all the burrs and all the nasty bits that, quite frankly, could cut your fingers. And that also just won't do. So I flatten the cutting edge and dunk it in some water to cool it all off. And now we've got the next stage. We need to grind it up. We need a primary bevel. And because this is a right-handed marking knife, I've got to make sure I put the bevel on the right-hand side. So the flat side can go up against my combination square or rule. So we're using this linisher, you know, a big belt sander, to grind the first bevel, the primary bevel. The rest will be done on diamond stones like these ones. And this was a set of three diamond stones, a 600, 400 and a 300. But we will also be using a thousand grit to make it a little bit sharper, that we will. Well, I do like my sharpened edges to be sharp enough to shave my hair. Oh, but just not down there because that would be dangerous. And a touch saucy. Oh dear. Don't do it. Not if you want to keep your bits. No, don't do it. So we finally use the thousand grit diamond stone to create the secondary bevel which will provide the sharp edge. But it doesn't stop there. No, we want it even sharper. So we're using this leather strop which I've mounted in a piece of wood. And I apply a little bit of lubricant and it lifts the polishing paste out of the leather to help polish the edge of the marking knife. And we do about 20 strokes on each side until we're satisfied it's sharp enough and can shave your nether regions if you really want to that is. But I don't recommend it, no. It's not a good idea, no. So we test it using the combination square. Putting the flat face against the square. And we find that the mark is bang on where it's supposed to be. Oh, it's perfect. Can't be bad. Oh, I'm happy that I am. 
But it's not very comfortable on the hand. No, oh dear. So what we're going to do, we're going to make a handle from this piece of walnut that we are. That'll be nice, won't it? Walnut. It's a lovely timber that it is. Exciting, eh? So we mark out our two handles onto the piece of walnut. Now I say two handles because we're going to sandwich the marking knife between the two pieces of wood. Which will make it really comfortable. But not at first, no. It will be a little bit lumpy. So we'll have to do something about that too. So we cut them out on the old bandsaw roughly to the line. Doesn't have to be that accurate at this stage, no. So we end up with two pieces of wood that are going to sandwich that marking knife. Oh, but what's next? What's that? Oh, what we got to do now? Okay. Oh, I think we may need to, well, drill some holes, I reckon. You can use a pit of drill, for which we will. Or you could use just an electric drill, a battery drill even, to drill your holes. Or a nice sharp drill bit, that I'd hope. So first of all, we have to drill the holes in the marking knife. Now my advice to you is don't do it like this. I didn't think until afterwards I was being rather silly because if the blade got caught by the drill bit, it would spin round and slice my hands off. And that would be, ooh, that would be gore. That's it, well, that'd be like a snuff video, this. No, can't do that. Place your marker knife in a drill vice. So we dry fit the wooden handles and mark the wooden handle through the steel of the marking knife with one of the bolt fixers we're going to be using, a couple little taps, and then we know exactly where the holes have got to be. But now we need to glue those handles to the marking knife. And as you can see, I've placed some, well, painter's tape onto my bench. And that is my mixing palette for my Arrowdite epoxy resin glue. Oh, it's five minute epoxy this one. So we combine all the elements. After we've applied the glue, the epoxy glue to all surfaces that are coming together. And then we push our bolts through. And then we clamp it together using some, well, spring clamps in this case. You could use any clamps or stick it in the vise if you must. And allow it to go off. But now, we've got heads and a bit of bolt sticking through. We need to remove that. So we use the angle grinder yet again. And grind off any exposed metal work. So we want it flush. Now the beauty about using the bolts is, the thread to the bolt will lock into the glue. So it'll never come apart, no. So a bit more sanding here and there. And we use a little drum sander to do all the internal rounds, all the convex rounds. And now we take it to the finisher and do all the concave rounds. As you can see, oh look at that, doesn't that work a treat? That it does. And removing all the glue that's squeezed out. So stab with the knife into a piece of wood. And spin it round while you spray your lacquer. And so now we have a lacquered handle. You can put other finishes if you like. Polyurethane. You could just oil it if you want. It don't really matter. But I chose lacquer for some reason. I don't really know why. Then I take some 1200 grit wet and dry paper. And polish it up so it's all smooth and lovely in the hand. That it is. So I suppose we better go back to him and uh, well, let him finish his piece. Well, there you go. I hope you enjoyed my little video of me making my little Kiradashi Japanese style marking knife. And it's so pretty that it is. And this particular one is made from an old surplus saw blade. This is an old tungsten carbide toothed 10 inch surplus saw blade. Anyway, if you want to see me make other little projects such as this one, I like making tools, I do. Well, why don't you click like and subscribe and maybe a little bell icon because then you get a warm fuzzy feeling in your pocket every time I upload another video. And I hope you'll be excited about that. And if you want to support us, you can do that on Patreon or you can buy us a coffee. And it is very much appreciated that it is. Ta-ta!